This video is sponsored by Alpha Draft, where you can play fantasy spots such as League of Legends. In the, in the, when the seasons were running, you could play ULCS, NALCS. I assume you'll be able to play Worlds when it comes around. Go to the link in the description box below if you indeed would like to play there and potentially win money. Thousands of dollars have been won. Now, when we were doing a recent Summoning Insight episode, we were discussing some of the NALCS playoff matchups and some of the unusual pick bans or players being put on a championship that didn't, didn't really make that much sense, especially in terms of the results may have cost them the game. And I came to kind of a, not necessarily an epiphany, but just kind of like, a, I think I had identified a pattern and a way of characterizing what some Western coaches do and one of their problems that I hadn't really thought about in the same way previously. Because oftentimes when you're looking at pick ban, yes, you're looking at like what suited your players, what made sense in terms of the comp here, like did this champion fit with this one, was there no synergy or interaction? Yes, you're looking at the enemy, like did I deny this guy the right champion? Did, did I understand the strength of what he was going to be able to do? We understand all of this. We understand the kind of this wide area of what you're doing in pick ban and what you're trying to accomplish. But one area I feel like particularly Western coaches are falling into a trap of is... They make the the pro. They run into the delusion of thinking that one of their players, the players they coach, they work with, C and scrims, C and solo queue, is better in competitive play at specific champions or running a specific role, which maybe goes counter to their strengths. So they've misidentified the strengths or the ver the versatility or the variety of things that they're player can do or maybe even he if even is a star if he's a supportive player they they might have understood some aspects of him as a player but they've misunderstood some of this or they've exaggerated too much in their own mind that it ends up costing them in the game and so it's not lack of knowledge of the enemy it's not lack of knowledge of the meta it's not lack of knowledge of what champions work together and how they can work together and how it can be executed it's not understanding that by misidentifying the player you have in the first place the personnel and their strengths and their skill set that's what makes it not work because then you might have a good plan they can't execute it you might go down the wrong route where another route might not be as strong in the meta might not be as effective now but would have worked better for them and gave your team a better chance of winning so to, to outline this topic i will again outline a basic model of how i see teams in terms of how a coach should think about it and it's something that i outlined originally in the video i did when reginald took over tsm in terms of being the coach there and the point i made was think of a team in terms of a three level hierarchy and you start at level one the top this is the most important one in terms of you have to start here you have to do good work here and understand what you're doing and identify correctly for the other parts to be able to work no matter how good the other parts are if you fuck up on level one level two doesn't work that well if you fuck up on level one and level two or level one or level two then level three isn't gonna uh, be be as effective so level one is identity and what i mean by identity is one the most basic level literally who is in your team if I know who is in your team, that means, for example, okay, I have, okay, say I have a Korean top laner and a Korean jungler and the rest of my team aren't Korean. Well, then I'm probably, just as a very basic sense of how I'm going to think about the team, going to have to try and find situations in which maybe those two Koreans work together, or maybe I look at how they can play off each other, or maybe I put them in situations where they don't have to communicate as much with the rest of the team. Now you can see how identity is allowing me to start deciding the strategy, which is the level below of what I'm going to do with the personnel. Also, what are the strengths of each of these players? In isolation, what are their strengths? Is this guy a carry player? Is he really good on these sorts of champions? Is he really good in this particular sense? Is he really good given this sort of a role? Okay, now, in the context of the team, does he still fit that identity? In the team, have we got too many of a certain type of player? And so he's going to have to, because he has the skill set to do something else, do something else instead. Now we're going down to the strategy once we've identified the strengths. And the strategy is going to be the general approach we use to make the most out of these strengths and weaknesses and skill sets and avoiding weaknesses, emphasizing strengths, making not just individual strengths work, but the, the group approach the strongest. And we're going to use the strategy, the general approach we have. Are we going to play aggressively? Are we going to play around this particular player? Are we going to play with these interactions in the team? Are we going to play late game? Are we going to play early game? Are we going to go for scaling comps if we want to protect a certain person here? Are we going to make advantage of a really strong strength we have here? Like, for example, maybe an aggressive jungler, put him on carry champions early, get him the dive. Get, get people follow up, etc. 
This is the strategy, but now the tactics is how are we going to get that strategy and activate it in specific instances. So I'm going to do that with this aggressive champion. I'm going to do that at this point in the game with this level one. I'm going to do that after we take out the first tower. We're going to group around this guy here. And we're going to use his champion and his skill set in this particular sense. Or we're going to have this other guy not do something because it's a weakness of his. Once we've identified the top layer identity, then the strategy of roughly the, the collection of approaches we're going to take, then we can build individual tactics. Now, the problem with some of these Western coaches, essentially, is that because they're failing level one, this identity, because they're thinking this player is stronger or he can do more than he can do or he's good on these champions, etc. When they come to strategy, even if the strategy is not terrible, like the overall strategy of how the team might function, a lot of it might make sense and to get this other guy to work on I mean, it, because they failed on at least one player, the overall strategy is going to be a bit off and it's not quite going to work. And then, because they've got the identity off and then the strategy itself has been thrown off, even if the tactics themselves seem flawless in isolation outside your team, this comp is very well set up. It can execute these things and that even works again what the opponent's going to run and that should win you the game and this sort of a player if he could play this champion would dominate the game in this way and be the most effective and beat this other matchup if you haven't identified properly and then the strategy's off these things are going to feed into the bottom level where you might have all the tactics and execution in theory on paper how it would need to be but you won't be able to execute it. you won't be able to make it happen you won't have the tools to make that plan a reality and so I'll give you some examples of where I think this is a flaw because what I think is happening is some of these coaches are doing their homework as analysts and coaches. They're taking the most meta effective stuff. They're taking stuff that counters within the meta to other things that force certain reactions that they want to other things. They're taking effective things, comps, champion picks from Korea, from China, better regions. They're just misapplying it because they're not understanding the strengths of their players. And I think even if it turns out as a layman, I'm off on some of these examples, I think the general point should carry over and you should should be able to see in general in history how this has been one of the areas where if not it's that the western coaches are delusional i think they are a bit delusional it's that some of them just haven't clued into a more reasonable perspective on their teams and they're still trying to go for the most perfect thing that koreans and others star players might be able to do that their player might not be able to do even within his region so the two main examples i have is tip team impulse when they played against team liquid and clg particularly clg and then later on, I've got an example of when Team Liquid played against TSM. Now, in the case of TIP, Team Impulse, when we do the identity phase of their team, here's how we identify their team. The old lineup was two star players. The main stars of the team is Impact, carry top laner but who can play bruisers and can play tank type champions if needs be but in general in na especially at his best on the tanks as the carry champion very strong player in the na region contextually other star player jungler rush another korean so you synergize as well with impact carry jungler aggressive jungler ganking jungler guy who wants to get in there make action make fights make ganks so if we put these two together at the top our top jungle synergy and in this matter is very strong could be dominant and we have one of the best in the whole league maybe the only team that can even qualify to, to battle us in this sense of how good their top jungle synergy is is uh, team liquid maybe it's the only one and even then i think a lot of people would probably say tips advantages would overall still be on their part in this matchup Mid laner, when it was Zhao Wei Zhao, yes, Zhao Wei Zhao can be a star. He's probably left to be a half star where sometimes on the right champion in the right game he's going off. Otherwise, he just just plays for farm, just plays to allow the other parts of the team, doesn't lose lane essentially. As long as these things are there, great player in terms of what he can do for tip. The bot lane, jungle uh, support who's really good at vision, who's good in team fights, good kill participation, doing a good job generally as a supportive type support player, not much of a playmaker. Then we've got the AD carry, perfectly serviceable, mid-tier NALCS clean up AD carry. And in this meta, where all he needs is a clean up AD carry, he can be somebody who's be quite effective as a clean up AD carry, not the primary threat. Now the problem is, that's the other tip. And when they won, these things are all working and it all seemed to work fine. The problem was, they got Zhao Wei Zhao banned. And now, as a second threat, they couldn't have the mid laner because they brought in Gate, a guy from Challenger, who wasn't a strong player, he's quite weak in terms of champion pool, hasn't played much in terms of experience because of how late Wajawa Zhao got banned. And so, suddenly, they didn't want to have the mid laner be the carry anymore, which I understand to a degree, and I understand why they tried to cover his weaknesses when you think about it that way, but when you look at their decision overall, I don't know how it was supposed to succeed. Because instead, what they did is at the moment, yes, people are running some top laners that aren't the carries. They're like Shen, Maokai is obviously still very much in the meta. But if you're going to run those, and you're not going to run any sort of a carry mid in any sense, and so instead, 
what they were doing was they were putting their mid laner onto let's have a look they put him onto lulu in game one against clg lulu in game two against clg and they finally gave him victor in game three but it's too late at that point in time now when they did this they ran these two comps that were low damage comps so in game one they had let's see game one they had shen top for impact they had eve as rush's jungler they had lulu on gates mid they had apollo as the damage threat on cogmo which is going to take a long time to scale up to be really damaging it's going to have to survive to that point in time 30 minutes 35 minutes and they had um alistair on adrian the support now game two so basically apollo's going to have to carry that game in terms of damage on game two they had impactors on maokai rush was on lee sin okay more of a damage champ earlier on but not going to scale well in the game lulu again on the mid laner vane hyper carry on apollo he's gonna have to carry the whole fights again braum as the support in the last game okay this one they did have victor in but even so they had maokai on impact's top laner rush on lee sin victor mid lane Cogmore again on Apollo, another carry you're going to have to go for, and Adrian on Braum. Now, the flaw here, as should be fairly apparent, is not even just that this is, like, not going to work. It's that when we looked at the identity, we never identified Apollo as a main threat. Or if he was a threat, it's only going to be against the middle to the lower part of the table. Against top-tier AD carries, he's not a threat. He's not going to be able to match up well. And in these two playoff series, in the first playoff series, they're going as double lift arguably the mvp of the whole split of any position but the best ad carried na and then in the third place game they're going against piglet either the best ad carrying na or the second best ad carrying na so they're going against two stars two primary carries in those positions with a guy who's not suited for that entirely and then you put it solo damage he's going to be have to be the solo carry and it's just not going to happen for you is it so it's never going to work now i understand the idea about having to put gate onto lulu and stuff like this because you're worried about he can't play anything except azir and they banned out azir all the time and yes once you put him onto lulu etc well now it's going to be hard to use carry tops it's not going to, they're not going to interact as well so suddenly you need the shen you need the maokai for impact so now you've sort of painted yourself into a corner i mean riot hasn't really helped the old banning with zhao with zhao where the only guy left is apollo and maybe you run it in that sense so in that one i'll give him a bit of a pass in as much as i do understand the extenuating circumstances but i thought outside of that this was a good example of where if you look at the overall trend this is misidentifying the strengths of your team and what you can do because these champs and these comps can work if you had imp if you had deft if you had uzi Ali, these comps could work and win you the whole fucking game but not against these opponents not with your personnel that wouldn't work from the identity the strategy and then the tactics which in theory are sound uh, misapplied and even the strategy has a logic to it that makes sense but not with this identity this personnel now let's go over to the other example because the other example in this is team liquid playing against tsm in the semi-finals because on paper you look at ts team liquid should be the best team in the league they've got the best lineup of players who are all among the best in their positions and just head to toe great players great mechanical players who should be able to always get leads up to the first 20 minutes but first of all they're playing against team tsm and tsm have had some issues in terms of threats and in terms of overall damage output and in terms of stars they've only really got beers and a consistent star but what they've been good at especially through the playoffs as it's gone on is becoming this macro late game team of making good decisions from 20 25 minutes on exactly when the tl advantage drops off and when even when they have a lead they sometimes fuck up so if we're going against tsm we can't afford to let them get to that point in the game we have to kill them early and use our mechanical strengths use our threats get them onto the strong champions comfort champions wreck early that's what we've got to do so what do they do instead first things first the delusion so just as the delusion with tip was thinking apollo could be this carry main star lone threat lone damage source the problem here in tl series one of them aside from underperformances from other players was what they did with phoenix's champion pool because phoenix as you've seen from a lot of people a lot of players some experts some coaches think phoenix is an absolute beast he's one of the absolute best mid laners in all of na and he's amazing he's right up there with bjergsen i don't think so i know a whole bunch of other people who don't think so we think he's quite gimmicky on certain champions we think he can be strong mechanically sometimes he's not a very consistent player he doesn't bring a consistent carry presence in that sense it's good that he plays on a team with quads one of the best top players and the best one of the best eddie carries in the whole region so he doesn't have to do it that much 
He can get away with being more a wild card presence in that sense where he shows up great. If he doesn't, we can still win the game anyway. Or he might just do okay and we win the game. That's not what stars do. Now, in that particular sense, the identity of the team, again, I'm picking him not to be my main carry, sort of, unless he's on his champions. If you think he can do anything, though, if you think he can do all these aspects, and you think the strategy means we can put him on anything, and the tactics mean, right, given this champion, this champion's going to work against that comp, this champion works in this matchup, that's where this fell apart for my money, and that's where they misidentified Phoenix in this particular sense. Because first and foremost, the first thing I would tell you about Phoenix is he needs Azir if you want him to be a big threat and you want him to carry in any sense. Azir is his must-have champion. It's the champion he basically was the only one you could almost be certain he'd win on during the split. I mean, last split, he had the same problem, by the way. Last split, his champion where he had to do this and he had to be on it was Corky. But this time around, it's Azir, okay? Another meta champion. It's the one he has to have. Well, first of all, they weren't able to get it for him most of the time. And part of that is because they were playing against TSM and Bjergsen's a monster on Azir. So if Azir's up, Bjergsen's going to take it. So looking into what they did in pick ban, so we'll go into game one. Liquid doesn't ban Azir. TSM don't ban Azir. Bjergsen gets Azir. Game two, Liquid don't ban Azir. TSM don't ban Azir. Bjergsen gets Azir. TSM win both of these games. The champions that they put Phoenix onto is in game one, they put him onto Lulu. Now, here's the thing, in terms of the comp, in terms of what there is, they're playing Nartop, they're playing Cogmore as the AD carry is the main damage source, they've got the Lulu, they're going to try and do a, a Juggermore type comp, okay, this is all fine, the problem is, Phoenix is not a Lulu player, no, at all, by the way, he's someone where, in 2015, he's played it in four games prior to these playoffs, and he'd gone one to three in games, and he'd never played it in the summer split in the regular portion. He doesn't play it. He's not a Lulu player. You don't think of it as within his wheelhouse. So they've got on champions that might fit the comp, that might fit what you're trying to do against the enemy, but actually are not going to work. Also, you're noticing these, this comp with the Cogmore is probably trying to head towards the late game. This is what it's, it's what it's saying for him, protection for the Cogmore. But they're playing against TSM, who if it gets to the late game, are going to have their advantages at that point in the game. They're not putting Phoenix on some high damage shit that he can just wreck with early. It's not in that particular situation. Now then, let's go to, over to game two. So game two, Bjergsen again gets his ear. Bjergsen again does well. This time they go with Victor for Phoenix. Now, okay, that's fine, right? You probably think to yourself, well, that's okay. Victor's a, a meta champion right now. You see Victor and Azir match up all the time. Victor is very high pick band priority within Asia, particularly in Korea. This makes sense, right? Ah, but does it? Because here's the thing. Phoenix is not much of a Victor player. He has played three games of Victor this split in the regular portion, and he won one of them. In general, his Victor's fairly trash. He, I mean, I, I'll, I'll actually look up what the stat was for him. It was something absolutely ludicrous when he was on Victor. Like, let's see what it was here. So when he was on Victor, it was actually the kills, I remember. Okay, so on Victor, he averaged less than a 5 KDA. He had 12 kills and 6 deaths in the three games. Not even tons of assists. I mean, this really wasn't a champion that, that was monster. Whereas for his Azir, for example, where he played only five games, he had 36 kills, only 10 deaths in five games, 37 assists. So you can see the massive drop-off between his Azir and his Victor. It's, not, it's, not, it's night and day completely. And in the two games he plays Victor in these playoffs, the second and the fourth, I believe, he loses. And they lose the game, and he doesn't perform well, and he actually dies... Let me see. He dies five times and he manages to secure all of three kills over both games and seven assists. So three kills, five deaths, seven assists. Not a good scoreline, not a good performance. And again, with the kind of comps they were running, they were going to have to head to the late game. They were going to have to presumably try and get something from the fucking AD carry to win this game. So it wasn't going to happen for them. Now you look... The one game he got Azir. The one game he gets Azir, he wins. He dominates. He goes 6-1-10. Bjergsen on Ari only goes 5-3-7. That's a good game decently, but TSM gets outplayed. The game ends. I can't remember how many games, how long it lasted. Let me have a look. Yeah, it doesn't actually say how long they last on these games. But it worked out. They got the right pick. 
But for all the other games, you can see even in pick ban, the flaw in picking it and thinking that a Phoenix can do more than he can do. And not only that, thinking he can do more and to play shit he doesn't even play against the best mid in the region and then giving the best mid in the region his champions. For the first two games, Bjergsen gets Azir. So you know I said how you need Azir on the side of Phoenix. If you can't get Azir, you've got to ban it. Because Bjergsen on Azir was 4-0 this split. Bjergsen's Azir is fantastic. Why don't they ban out Bjergsen's Azir? Why don't they ensure he doesn't get it? They don't mind it. They, don't, they give him it and they're down 2-0 as a result of it. This is just failing to acknowledge the strengths and weaknesses of your player and just exaggerating his strengths, ignoring his weaknesses, or just delusionally thinking he's better in that sense. I mean, again, I'm only a layman in this sense. I'm not a master of matchups. I'm not somebody who professes to have that sort of idea. These are just patterns I've noticed and things that from talking to people, I've tried to run these ideas by some of them and they, some of them agreed there was something to it or as a general point, they agreed with the idea that the coaches sometimes are delusional in this sense and that you have to understand this identity core principle. I thought it was an interesting point to make in light of how those playoff series went. Because, okay, maybe CLG would have beaten Tip anyway, but Tip pretty much gave themselves no chance to win. Now, TL could have beaten Team Liquid or that could have gone to five games, but they didn't even allow their own strengths to understand where in the game they were strong, which positions they were strong at, and on what champions, and then gave up strengths to the opponent because they didn't think it was going to be a problem. They thought they could deal with it, and they couldn't. So thanks to Alpha Draft for all the cash.